But it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Hallelujah. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, come on, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn de deceitfully, he shall receive what? The blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Come on, this is the part that I want you to catch in verse 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors or ancient doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift you up everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Somebody say, I am a gate. I am a gate. Say it again, I'm a gate. Yes. Come on now, we're going to tie in with Jesus was teaching even with the Lord's Prayer, where he, where he, was, where he, said, he, he said, repeat after me, so, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us of our sins or our debtors, right? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen, right? So in essence, that's still the same prayer. Why? Because that can only, what did he say? On earth as it is, as it is in heaven, right? Which means that there has to be a connection between two gates. That's why I'm telling you that you are a gate. Somebody say, I'm a gate. I'm a gate. Come on. Jesus touches people through us, right? So we are, that's why we are considered the extension of Christ's ministry because we are a spiritual gate. Which also means whatever you allow huh, is able to pass through. Can I tell you, that's not just... That's not just the Lord, but, but that's even demonic stuff. That's why, you know, the, the Bible says that, for that, that, that the kingdom suffered violence and the violence taken by force. Like I've always told you, you have two kingdoms fighting for your attention or fighting to access your gate. You see that? Because whatever they, that they, have, they can um, release through that gate, they can establish, they can only establish authority through these type of gates, these flesh gates, you and I, right? So that's why the enemy wants to take the treasure. What is the treasure? Your will. He wants to take hold of that. He wants to possess that. Listen, that's one thing that God put in us that he will now override. You have to submit that to him. Just like you have to submit your will to the devil, right? But he's already told us in the word that submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Why? Because the devil is trying to have, get access to your gates. And if he has access to your, your gates, then he has authority in this realm. So just in case you didn't realize it, you have value. You are important. You play a very important part. That's why there's no big eyes or little U's in the kingdom. We are all the same. Amen. Somebody said we are all the same. We all the same. And we're all gates. We're all there's nobody better than this one in the kingdom. We all in the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, we, we, and we all are to point everyone to him. You shouldn't be pointing nobody to you. You're not the one. You didn't die for nobody. Come on. You didn't. Come on, ain't nobody pull out no whoop, whoop, you, whoop you in your back. Matter of fact, if we would have saw the way, if we would have act like they would have pulled that thing out, we'd be like, mm, we got to, mm, this ain't going to work. But we are a gate. Amen? 
Hallelujah. It's, see, if, if we, I mean, even when you think about Jesus, Jesus says that I am the door. Yes. It's the same thing. No one comes to the Father unless he first comes through me, right? It's like when we were talking a couple of weeks ago about the ancient path. Jesus is the ancient path and the door, right? Because why? Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? No one can come to the Father or ancient days, the ancient of days. Come on, that, that's the Father. Come on, the great I am. No one can come to him unless they first pass through me, which is the gate. So, so when we read, we said, be lifted up the everlasting or the ancient doors, that's him. And the king of glory shall come in. So the purpose of you being the door is so that he can come in and, and come on, invade. You see that? That's why, that's why in that same, in this, in this same um, Psalms, where it speaks about clean hands and pure heart. That have that sworn just deceitfully. Come on. He can come, he can come through a gate that has, that's pure. Your heart is right. Amen? That's why you have to guard your gates. Last week I talked to you about your personal gates. What are your gates? Your eye gates, your ear gates. Come on. You know, these different gates that, are, that, that can enter in. You know, the Bible says that your, that your eyes is the windows to your soul. Right? So the enemy tries to get, get inside of your gates so that he can affect your heart. And if he affects your heart, you know, the, out, of the, come out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks, right? Life or death is in the power of the tongue. So the tongue is basically controlled by the heart. So if he can get in and, and, and infiltrate your house, your gates, and get into your heart, he's going to affect what you release. Not just what you release. Come on, the things that you release in your atmosphere. The things that you can release over your own life. Sometimes you don't need nobody to curse you. You can curse your own self. <laughs> Due to what you've allowed inside your gates. See, that's what I love about Nehemiah. Nehemiah didn't just repair the breaches in the wall. He repaired the gates. And those that were that lived in that section of the city were responsible for guarding and watching those gates. Which means everybody in the city had a job. There wasn't nobody just sitting on the bench just watching, talking about you got it, you got it. No, everybody had a job. Everybody, listen, if you wasn't standing at the gate, you was watching. So we, somebody said, we all have a responsibility and can I tell you, he who controls the gate controls the resources of that city. Did you, did you catch that? That's why if, if for, for an example, if you go into a city and there's a lot of crime and there's a lot of poverty, there's a lot of sickness in that city, that's an indication that something demonic is controlling that gate. Because... He's a gatekeeper. See, because just like there's, there's kingdom gatekeepers, there's demonic gatekeepers and demonic watchers. Yes. Amen. Just like there's good and then there's evil. Come on, you got both sides, right? So, you, so if, if there's a lot of that contingent, a lot of the stuff happening in a region or happening in your life, somewhere along the line, the enemies took hold of that particular gate and is allowing stuff in. You know, for instance, I'll give you another example. The Bible speaks about um, the, the spirit that, was, that had left the house, was kicked out, and he wanted to go back. As he had looked and couldn't find the horse, he said, I'm going to go back to my house. And he said, when I go back to my house, I'm going to bring seven more worse than me. So those seven spirits is going to go back into that house, but he being number eight is the gatekeeper because he said, I'm going to go back there, which means that I have keys. I have, in other words, I have the key where I can stick into the door and hit the certain triggers in them to unlock that, to let all the rest of them in because I am the gatekeeper. That's why it's vitally important that in your personal life that you allow the Holy Spirit to change your locks. 
Come on, in the natural, when you kick somebody out your house, listen, you don't give, me, don't give the devil no 30 days notice. Amen. You remember in church, they said, you know, devil, I serve you notice. Look, he doesn't never give you no notice. Amen. He just come in without, listen, he's not even invited. He just come in, act the fool, just tear up stuff. Yes. I'm not giving the devil no notice. Amen. Get out. And see, when, you, when, when, when a spirit is evicted out of you, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to change the locks. Yes. Why? Because you are a gate. Yes. And whoever controls that gate controls that house yes. or controls that city and the resources that's on the inside. Come on. There's gifts and resources on the inside of you that the enemy wants to try to control yes. and possess. That's why you've got to guard the gates. Somebody say, I got to guard the gates. Hallelujah. According to Genesis, I'm just reminding you of, of last week. According to Genesis chapter 22, verse 17. I'm going to start with verse 16. Well, verse 15, it says, Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, yes. right? This is when he had placed Isaac on the altar and he, and he was getting ready to kill him and the Lord stopped him, yes. right? Verse 17, blessings, I will bless you and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sandwiches on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. So when you came into the kingdom, you, you became the seed of Abraham. And because you are the seed of Abraham, you have the authority to possess the gates. So before you was born, you was already destined to take the gates. Come on, this ain't something that, that just happened. This has already been established. That anywhere that the enemy has taken gates, he's given you the authority to take those gates back. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm taking the gates back. Hallelujah. Now, what I told you last week, what gates are. Gates is, uh, gates is an opening. It's, 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 legal, it's a legal access point. It's, it's, it's access into your life, your, your city, a, a church, a family, a nation it, that is granted. So if, as a gatekeeper, you have keys. Why do you, say, why do you think he told Peter? He said, Peter, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. You get the purpose of getting keys is not just so you can walk into I got keys. These is keys to doors and gates. And one thing, I'm going to throw this in, one thing about a gate, how do you know that you're a gatekeeper is, is, is that you carry a certain amount of influence. Yeah. Yeah. Some gatekeepers have an anointing to make kings. Some of them are kingmakers because of the weight and the influence that they carry at that gate. Why? Because if you, the one that, 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 that watches and protects that gate controls the resources of that city. That's why the enemy wants to take your cities. Because the gatekeepers, some of the gatekeepers haven't been standing watch. Some of the gatekeepers have been sleeping on their post. Somebody say, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Come on, why, come on, why are you sleeping? The enemy is coming in. Hallelujah. I remember reading, I believe it's in the book of Daniel, it speaks about when um, Nebuchadnezzar was, was king and they, were, they got drunk and, and they were sloppy drunk and sleeping and then their enemy traveled, traveled underground and broke through, through the ground in the kingdom and began to siege the kingdom. But they were so drunk that they could not fight them and they were overtaken. So another word for for being intoxicated, they was under another influence yes. where it took their strength, where they had their, their inability, their, it took their awareness and their inability to protect the kingdom. Because they, were, they got distracted. They got, 
busy doing other things. They wasn't focused on their post. Listen, if you're going to be a gatekeeper, you got to have the ability to remain focused. You have to have the ability to come on, to stand and watch. Hallelujah. And understand that you have a weapon that God has anointed for you to use. Amen. You know, when I think about Samson, the Bible says that he took the jawbone of, of a donkey and killed a thousand men. But it was just a regular jawbone until he connected with it. When he grabbed that thing, that jawbone had the same anointing that was on him. Come on. That, that's why you mean to tell me out of a thousand heads that he cracked with helmets on him, that jawbone didn't break? Hallelujah. Somebody say, God has given me a weapon. Come on, that I could crack heads of the enemy. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I could crack his dome. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Somebody say that I'm going to guard the gates. Hallelujah. Now, last week, I, I also told you about, you know, your, your eye gates, you know, being careful what you allow in, yes. what you're watching, guarding your ear gates. Be careful what you listen to. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, you have to, and, and what comes out your mouth. Amen, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. You have to protect those gates. Yes. Now, now, when you're, now, when you are responsible for your own gate, then that also gives you the, the ability to, to protect the next gate I would have introduced to you, which is called your family gate. Amen. Amen. Protect your family where, where the enemy can't, can't just come in and disrupt and attack your family. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Why? Because you, come on, you took the time to get you together. Amen. Right? So you're already in a posture of readiness so when, the, so, so when the enemy comes, you see him coming from afar off. See, because one thing about a gatekeeper and a watcher, sometimes you're doing both at the same time. Sometimes you're watching, and then other times you, somebody else may be watching, and you at the gate. See, the difference between a gatekeeper and a watchman is a watchman sees from afar off, but a gatekeeper sees up close. And they have two different kinds of weapons uh, how, on how they fight. A watchman, when he sees something, he sounds the alarm. Yes. But a gatekeeper, he ain't sounding no alarm. He just, hey, he about to kill somebody. Hallelujah. So sometimes, sometimes you may not only just be a watchman, but you may be a gatekeeper at the same time. But the bottom line is you have to stay in a position of readiness at all times. Hallelujah. Somebody say protect your family. The next gate is the church gate. Somebody say the church gate. Let me tell you something. When nobody is standing at the gate called the church, right? If nobody is protecting that gate, you want to know what could come in that, in that church? Fighting. Prayerlessness. Confusion. Strife. Somebody say every evil will work. <laughs> Division can come in there. Hallelujah. Jealousy can come in there. Competition can come in there. Because nobody's standing at the gate, yes. protecting the gate. Yes. Hallelujah. See, that's, um, there's, there's something that, that there's a spirit that always comes in the midst of the churches, in the midst of believers. It's a spirit of competition. But one way, that if you want to uh, take away the power of that spirit, you have to just understand what your assignment is and be cool with that and do that. When you don't understand your assignment and what you're called to do, you will always find yourself in, uh, competing. God did not call you to compete with nobody. You are uniquely made and designed for a particular purpose that he put you in the earth to do. Somebody said, I'm not like nobody, I'm just me. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I've got to protect the gate so that no prayerlessness, because prayerlessness is a sin. So that no fighting, come on, no strife and division could come among us. 
Come on, when that guard, see, when, when that, when, when there's no one guarding that gate, the enemy can come in with a method called divide and conquer. Amen. Which is scriptural because the Bible says that a house that is divided within itself cannot stand. Which means if they're divided, they lose their strength. Because they're only stronger together. Somebody say unity. unity. Hallelujah. So the enemy wants to bring division to disrupt the unity and take the strength. Somebody say, I got to guard the gate. Then there's another gate I want to mention to you, which is called the city gate. Hmm, the city gate. Like I told you before early, if there is a lot of crime, and sometimes it may not be in a particular area, but in other areas there's a lot of high crime, that's an indication that there's, there's a, a demonic spirit that's at that gate. Poverty, sickness, injustice, where there's a lot of injustice and violence, there's something demonic at that gate because I, what did I tell you? That there are demonic Gatekeepers and watchmen. Somebody said, we've got to protect the gate. You know, it makes me, it, it reminds me of in the book of Acts, chapter 16, where it speaks about the damsel that had the spirit of divination. Now, I want, I, I, want you to, I want you to really grasp what I'm about to say to you. This young girl was operating under the spirit of divination. The, divin, the spirit of divination was a demonic spirit that, took, that held that region hostage. But what gave that spirit the strength, the legal right to function, do what it, do what it was doing, is that the people in the city, some of the ones that were in the city became comfortable with her rulership. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because they were profiting from the divination. Yeah. So when Apostle Paul came in that region, when Apostle Paul and Silas came in that region because he is an apostolic gatekeeper, and she began to prophesy and say to him, these are men of God. I mean, she wasn't lying, she was speaking the truth, but it was from another spirit. It wasn't the spirit of God, it was the spirit of divination. And he rebuked that spirit. And when he rebuked that spirit, the hold that the spirit of divination had over that region was broken at that moment. But what happened, the ones that was profiting wasn't profiting no more. So they felt some type of way. And come on, they went to the magistrate on them. And they sent them, they sent them down. They got beat up, tore up. Come on, and throw them into the inner prison. But when they begin to sing praises unto God, come on, it caused us suddenly to happen because they were gatekeepers. Hallelujah. When you're a gatekeeper, you have to understand that you carry a certain weight, you carry a certain authority on your life. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Come on. Before you can step, listen, before you step on the grounds when you are a gatekeeper, come on, the, the, the sound is already going out and the enemy's trying to do all he can to stop you from coming. Come on. When you think about Jesus, when he, when he, when he told his disciples to go to the other side, he was in the belly of the ship. They began to panic. Experienced fishermen begin to panic, you know, because of the winds was blowing and the storm was moving, right? And then they woke up Jesus. Come on, somebody say they woke up Jesus. Jesus woke up, walked in front of the ship and said, peace, be still. And then peace came. Why? Because he was, and what he was doing, he was rebuking the spirit of legion that sent that storm. Because legion, where they were going, the other side in that region, where they were going, they was going to come in contact with legion. But legion, come on, had picked it up in the spirit, so he sent a distraction. 
He caused a storm. He was trying to get those brothers to turn around. I'm here to tell you, if those brothers turned around, that storm would have cleared up. But the very time they would have got back on that water, that storm would have showed up because it was demonic. But Jesus was with them. Come on, he carried an authority with him. Come on, why? Because he came in here legally through the seed of a woman. Come on, can I tell you that the woman's womb is even a gate? Come on, he came through the gate. He came through the seed of a woman, which gave him legal right to operate in this realm. So when he got done, when he said, they said, listen, even the winds and the waves obey him. Yeah. They like, man, what kind of brother is this when the winds and waves obey him? Yeah. So, when, so when they finally get to the other side, Legion meets them. Yeah. Runs and falls down. He said, what are you coming with? The leaders are cast out before our time. He had sent something down there before him to try to get them to turn around. But he had an assignment. Hallelujah. To take territory. Hallelujah. You've got an assignment in the kingdom to take territory. Hallelujah. And when you go in the assignment that God has called you to, hallelujah, it means he's going to back you. That when you begin to see the storm, see the ambushment of the enemy coming, you can speak to it just like Jesus and it will obey you. He shut down, come on, the, 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 the influence behind the wind and the waves. Hallelujah. He didn't deal with it in the natural, he dealt with it in the spirit. Hallelujah. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, then when, when, it, when you read on when, the, when, the, the, when, he tell the, when Jesus tells the disciples in another form of scripture to go to the other side, this time he sends them away, he goes away and pray. Then he comes down walking on water. Right? So he's walking on water, but he's walking at such a pace that if they weren't paying attention, they would have missed him. And then, come on, uh, uh, they begin to say, Lord, it's a ghost. They thought it was something demonic on the waters. <laughs> then Peter said, he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And, and Peter began to walk on the water, but the Bible said that he saw the wind. And he began to sink. And then Jesus and he cried out to the Lord. And when he cried out, he said, save me. And the Lord reached out. He grabbed him and said, oh, ye little faith, why did you doubt? See, we always tear Peter up talking about, yeah, he had little faith. But we don't talk about them other 11 brothers that were still on the boat. But what's so powerful at that particular moment, because remember, the first time they said, man, even the winds and waves obey him. At that moment, if you go back and read that particular portion of scripture in Matthews and in Mark, you will notice that those particular winds and waves, Jesus did not rebuke that one. <laughs> the first one he rebuked, but those he didn't rebuke, which means if, if, come on, if the winds and the waves will obey him, that means that that was something that he instituted to teach them something. Yeah. Because they was going to the other side again. Yes. Uh -huh. Woo. My God, let me come on back. Let me come on back. <laughs> Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say, protect the gates. Protect the, gates. the next gate I want to mention to you is in a national gate. National gate. Yes, a nation can be in serious trouble if certain gates are not open. If, if, if particular gatekeepers, if the church, come on, the kingdom of God, the people in the kingdom that are called to particular gates on the east side, the north side, the west side, and the south side are not protecting the gates, something else is going to take hold of those gates and allow something into the nation. Come on, you wonder why we, you, we see all this crazy stuff happening in our nation? It's because 
We ain't been standing at the gates. And what God is doing right now, listen, for the past year and a half, two years, he's been stirring us to pray. He been st- he's talking to us about his presence, his power. Come on, ambassadors, you know, gatekeepers, watchmen. Why? Because he's trying to tell us it's time to take hold of the gates. He's going to tell us to return to the ancient path. So that you can be strong enough to go back to the gates and take hold of the gates. It's just time to storm those gates that the enemy has taken. And it's time for us to take those gates back. Somebody said we got to take them back. Hallelujah. The enemies, listen, when the enemy takes a gate, he surrounds a city. And those ga- and the gates of the city are closed when they siege them. The siege prevents the enemy from coming in, but it also brought famine, sickness, and problems. When you have the wrong kingdom at the particular gate, they allow other stuff inside. Why? What did I tell you? He who keeps that gate, controls the resources, controls what comes in and what comes out. So for example, if there's not a lot of evangelism in a particular region, what's that, who's at that gate? If there's, come on, if, if there was a, a wave of healing before that was sweeping in the, in, the, in the city or in a particular region, and it's not, who's at that gate? If sickness and disease is coming through that gate, has infirmity taken a gate? Somebody said, we got to take the gates. The duties of a gatekeeper. Number one, gatekeepers are the watchmen on the walls. At times, gatekeepers and watchmen are one position combined, like I told you before. But every gatekeeper must be alert and sensitive to rightly discern what to let through the gates. So, so, so in essence, like, and I, like I'll, I'll, I told you also too, gatekeepers are those that are people of influence. So if you was a gatekeeper and you carried a certain weight of influence, but you allowed the enemy to distract you and get you off, now God has to bring somebody else to stand at that gate because you've left because you have left your post. Number two, somebody say number two. Gatekeepers are ministers of God. They are trusted to protect the temple. Come on. Gatekeepers to defend the gospel, the truth of the word, and protect the holiness of the temple. Hallelujah. They know the scriptures well, and they are full of wisdom. Gatekeepers are bold to speak out against sin in the church. Number three, gatekeepers are teachers. They keep the Lord's people on the right path, keeping them from drifting. Come on. Gatekeepers gently teach and guide the people from taking wrong steps. When they're teachers, because gatekeepers are teachers, they keep people on the right path. They help to keep them focused with the knowledge of the word of God. Amen. Number four, gatekeepers are intercessors. Hallelujah. So, you know, sometimes we make intercessors and teachers, we make people think that intercessors and teachers are low level, but really they're high. (laughs) You know, everybody says, well, no, I'm I'm not no intercessor. I'm I'm a prophet. No, I'm I'm an apostle. No, listen, you got, if you are an intercessor, you hold one of the strongest... (laughs) Listen, the reason why, come on, the reason why the prophet and, and the apostles are able to do what, they, do what they can do is because of the intercessor. Yes. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Can I tell you that, listen, there's certain people, come on, even in our city, there's certain people that walk around and pray in the city that you don't even know of, that don't have no big name, but they carry a lot of weight in the realm of the spirit. So if you are, if you are just called an intercessor, understand that ain't no little job, that's a big thing. But anything that God gives you to do is not a little thing. It's always a big thing. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Gatekeepers are intercessors. Intercession. In, 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 they intercession in warfare. Come on. Every individual needs prayer. Family needs prayer. Amen. Churches. Come on. Cities. Nations. Amen. Hallelujah. There's, there's intercessors that pray for the nations. Hallelujah, they pray for cities. Yes. Hallelujah, they, they cover certain people, they cover regions. Amen? Hallelujah. They, listen, I, I had came in contact with this lady that was an intercessor that would purposely fly in a plane just so, so that she could pray over the regions. Amen. Come on, she was an intercessor by air. Come on, you better understand where you at in this. Come on, are you, are you part of the Air Force intercession? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number five, gatekeepers are responsible to guard God's secrets. Oh, my God. They, they are secrets that God only shares with his trusted children. But go with me to Amos 3 and 7 real quick. I'm going to start at verse 6. If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in a city, will not the Lord have done it? Verse 7, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Hallelujah. Somebody say secrets. A gatekeeper knows how to keep his mouth shut. Come on, Flip Wilson used to say, loose lips sink chips. <laughs> Hallelujah. They know how to, they, they know what to release. They carry a wisdom. Come on. A sensitivity. They know what to release and what not to release. Hallelujah. That's, see, that's the difference between a mature prophet and an immature prophet. A mature prophet will release certain things, come on, not to completely to expose you. But an immature prophet just will release everything that they see. Some things is for you to pray about and some things that you can release. Because you're supposed to bring healing to people, not destroy them. Hallelujah. Somebody said they know how to keep their mouth shut. Come on. And they, and they are the custodians of God's secret and the secrets of people. Yes, yes. Why? Because they stand at the gate and watch. You know, even according to the scriptures, when the prophets would prophesy, they would prophesy at the gates. Why? Because they understood the principle of at the gate. Whatever you allow in comes in. Whatever you don't allow can't get in. Right? So their, their gatekeepers are responsible for guarding um, God's secrets. Number six, gatekeepers hold the keys to open or close gates. Elijah was a gatekeeper. How do you know he was a gatekeeper? Because when he rebuilt the altar, the heavens opened and fire came down. So the gate of heaven was open. He had access to the gate. Why? Because order had needed to be restored. When Ahab gave Jezebel permission to tear down the altar of God and replace it with the altar of Baal, it caused a disruption. It caused such a disruption that he, he said it's not going to rain for three years, which means that he shut up the heavens. Amen. The floodgates. Yes. 
were closed for three years. Man, you better understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that, that proves that he was a gatekeeper. And when the people repented, then the, come on, the, he, said, he, said, he, he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Yes. And what did he do? He began to pray in a session. Yes. And when he began to pray, then what happened? A, a cloud the size of a man's hand just showed up over the waters, and then it began to expand and expand. He told Ahab, and said, listen, y'all better hurry up and get down here because it's about to be in abundance of rain. Why? Because of the, when they turned, when the people repented, then he was free to open the gate. But the gate didn't open up until he began to intercede. Why? Because intercession was a key to open that particular gate. He was a gatekeeper. How else could he shut the heavens where it wouldn't rain if he wouldn't? Come on, somebody. Gatekeepers, Keep watch for the Lord's return. They're always watching, paying attention. Amen? Gatekeepers are protectors and defenders. They protect. They guard. Amen? Somebody said, I'm, I'm guarding. I'm, I'm, come on, I'm protecting the Lord's presence. I'm protecting the gate. Amen? Come on, whatever, whatever gate God has called you to, come on, even, in, even during prayer watches, come on, if the, every, at certain times, there's gates that's open, there's portals that open in the realm of the spirit, or at certain times in the realm of the spirit, amen, hallelujah, that's why you, there's certain times that you go into prayer, because that's the time where there's spiritual activity happening at that time, because there's a gate that's opening, this is an exchange that's happening in the realm of the spirit. Yeah. So somebody, so when that time happens, somebody that's in the kingdom has to be at that gate. Otherwise, something demonic, come on, a yeah. demonic gatekeeper is going to stand in that gate and release something in this realm. Yeah. Somebody said, I'm called to defend my territory. Hallelujah. Come on, you, you decide what comes in. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Somebody say, Lord, we will stand our watch. We will remain in position as gatekeepers. Gatekeepers over our personal life. Gatekeepers over our family. Gatekeepers over, over our city. Gatekeepers over our church. And gatekeepers over our nation. We will stand at our post and sound the alarm and attack the enemy when he comes. And we will be victorious. Father, I just thank you, Father God, that we have made the, made the declaration that we will stand at our post. We will not allow the spirit of slumber to cause us to sleep on our post. Father God, we will stay alert. We will stay awake, oh God. But Father God, I thank you, Father God, that you will back us, that your spirit, your anointing, your glory will rest upon us and give us supernatural strength that the spirit of might will come upon us, Father God, when the enemy comes. So that we will be able to overpower the enemy with your strength, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that anything that has tried to come into our own personal gates, we push it out. In the name of Jesus, we command it to go. In the name of Jesus. So, Father God, as gates here on earth, Father God, remaking the connection with the ancient gate, we, de we declare and declare that the king of glory can come in and invade our life. The king of glory can come in and invade our cities. The king of glory can come in and invade our families, invade our church, invade our nation. Hallelujah. The king of glory. Hallelujah. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. 
invade our territory, invade our nation, invade our life. We open up the gate. We open up the gate. Have your way. Throw your weight around. Show the devil who's the boss. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. King of glory. Come on in. Lord, we, de we decree and declare that your kingdom shall not have no end in this region. We decree and declare that the knowledge of your glory, O oh God, shall cover this earth, shall cover us, shall cover this city, this region, our family, like the waters cover the sea. And you are a king of kings and lord of lords in this region. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to ask the Holy Spirit to revive our prayer life. Hallelujah. Come on, when you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to revive your prayer life, he gives you a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Come on. He helps. Listen, when you don't know what to pray, he'll pray for you. He'll pray through you. Hallelujah. When you, when you say, well, Lord, I don't know the right words. Don't worry about it. Just, just, just begin to pray. The Holy Spirit, I know what to ask for because I'm standing here with you because you're not in this by yourself. This is a partnership. Come on. We are a team. The Holy Spirit is working with us to help us to fulfill the kingdom of agenda. Hallelujah. He's going to make sure that, uh, come on, God's agenda comes to pass. Hallelujah. As we, are, come on, as we allow ourselves to be submitted to the Holy Spirit and he can lead and guide us, come on, he could take us by the hand and lead us, that, that qualifies us as sons. Yes. Come on, doesn't the Bible teach us? It says that those that are sons of God are led of the Spirit. Yes. Yes. Huh? If, you're not, if you can't be led of the Spirit, you're not a son. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to his name. Somebody say, I'm a son. And the Holy Spirit is free to lead me. Hallelujah, because I've got to protect the gates. Somebody say, on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, come on, let that sink in. That means that everything that's in heaven can come here to earth when you remain open as a gate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that's sin, come on, everything that's sin brought in, come on. We, listen, we are all a part of the extermination project of, of the kingdom. The Bible says that the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Come on. When he did that, he stripped him of his authority and power. That's why it says in Matthew chapter 28, all power is given unto me. Now go out and preach the gospel. Go out and make disciples. Go out and, come on, lay hands on the sick. Cast out devil. These signs shall follow them that believe. I have empowered you for the job. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I'm empowered to do this. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm empowered to do this. I'm built for this. Hallelujah. I came here with born carrying the stuff that I need. The Holy Spirit, all the, listen, the Holy Spirit is helping you to unearth what he's already placed on the inside of you. You came here with everything that you need. Come on, the Bible says that he brings all things back to your remembrance, which means that before you was a twinkle in your daddy's eye, before you was even made, you was already there. Come on, why? Why is that, Pastor? Because of, on earth as it is in heaven, we are seated in heavenly places. Come on. So when I came here, do come on, do my mother and father, come on, my mother and father had to come together so that I could be born and I'm carrying what I'm carrying to release in the earth. Come on, you are the answer to somebody's prayer. Come on, somebody had prayed something 40 years ago, and then you was born. 
Carrying the answer. That's how God does it. That's why, come on, we are the body. Somebody said, we are the body. Come on, somebody came here born carrying the cure for cancer. Somebody prayed, God, this, this disease, there's no cure for this disease. I'm a, Lord, send the cure, send the cure. So somebody gets born to be a deliverer. What am I saying to you? There's something on the inside of you that God placed in you to be an answer. A solution to a problem. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. You're not here just to take up oxygen. You're here for a purpose. Yes. And you're fully loaded with everything that you need to get the job done. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to his name. Somebody say, I'm built for this. I'm built for, I'm built for this. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. If I'm built for this, I'm built to win. Hallelujah, I'm built for victory. Hallelujah, as long as I stay, come on, connected to my coach, the Holy Spirit, I'm always going to win. Come on, the Holy Spirit is your Mickey and you Rocky. Come on, when it looks like the enemy's about to take over you, come on, the Holy Spirit gets to speak it to you and tell you, no, he's not no monster, you the monster. Come on, you can run over, you a tank, come on. You run over them. Run over your enemies. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. He's given you everything that you need to do what you've called to do. So don't feel like you don't got enough. Spend time in God's presence. You got enough. You just don't know. He's just going to help you unearth it. Come on. He's going to bring all things back to your remembrance. Come on, the very things, go. he's going to bring you back to the former conversations that you and the Father had before you got here. Oh, come on, I just said something to you. Come on, you was all, listen, before you was anything, you was in the heart of the Father. Come on, you, you were birthed, come on, in this city, come on, but you, you was first in the heart of the Father. You come from God. And you pass through the seed of the womb. Come on, you just pass through the womb just like Jesus. Come on, somebody. And put on our earth suit. Come on. So that you can have authority in this realm. Hallelujah. Don't you let the devil tell you that you can't do nothing. If the devil's telling you there's an indication that you can. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. <laughs> 